part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me, finally, back in the saddle, is that other, other, other half of me. James, the Superman of Red, Mr. Cole himself, the man of steel. What's up, man? Hey, yeah, it's been a while, man. Life has been crazy for both of us. Yeah, it, it feels like it's been a while, and it also feels crazy because I've recorded like these little segment episodes of things that are like um, little segments that I've been doing, catching up on by myself. And I'm like, gosh, it feels like I've done so much without James, and that just makes me sad. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's your it's your you know 15 minute spotlights on um, actors and characters, you know, 20 minutes on uh, like a certain comic thing, um, which one uh, I can't. That you've talked about. So what's, what's cool is next month. So I've been doing for the past three months, uh, dropping the little reviews of like five episode segments of the Kirk Allen serials. And next month I have an episode I'm dropping that was recorded about a month or two ago between me and Brian after he watched the serials of him and I just discussing the first Kirk Allen serial. So that'll be a cool treat for people uh, next month who's been following along with that. Because as we all know, you know, the Kirk Allen serials aren't streaming. Thank you, no longer DC Universe. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks though. That sucks just some of those more obscure things kind of disappeared with with the changing of DC Universe and HBO Max coming out. Yeah, we, we miss you, DC Universe. But hey, we got some cool news, some things to talk about. So let's get into it. Uh, Black Adam tickets are on sale. You know that's that's quick and easy. <laughs> yeah, I thought you are... were gonna. I thought you were gonna go into DC Universe real quick after that. Thought that yeah. was the segue. <laughs> oh, I, I did. I just totally forgot to. So DC Universe <laughs> has now been updated to what they're calling DC Universe Infinite Ultra. Uh, oh, yeah, Infinite Ultra. Like, there's you gave me too many words. It's the DCIU. <laughs> <laughs> that and I don't know all the ins and outs because I've heard some if you sign up now it's $100 for an entire year and you're getting more com- digital comics with an expanded library but the kicker is now comics are coming digitally one month after being released 30 days for less than $10 a month for a year and you get all I, the issues 30 days after they drop. And I've talked to you and I've talked to uh, Anthony Desiato. Like that's kind of a game changer because a lot of the stories that we read, sometimes we don't get to the issues just because of life, maybe a, a week, two weeks, maybe even three weeks till later, but one month being behind isn't that big of a deal, you know, cause like I love reading Nightwing. But if it's coming out one month behind, I can just read it on the app and not buy it. So it's going to make me just want to buy like specialty books. It's yeah, it's a single issue, you know. So That's all it is. I'm just like, yeah, it's going to save me money in the long run. <clears throat> you know, like books like, for example, Superman Space Age, those type of specialties I'll buy. But just your regular monthly stuff, like, you know, this whole DC Black Infinite Crisis thing, I would have not bought any of it. So I upgraded mine today. So um, that's what I did. I I upgraded mine today to Ultra. And um, I'll have to look and see if, like, Space Age is on there. But Dark Dark Crisis, Dark Crisis uh, on Infinite Earths, um, it's... 
it's four issues in on the app. And I know issue six is coming out like next week. So like probably next week, it'll be five issues on the app. So that, that'll be really cool. Um, and that it's going to have like, like it said, it's expanded library. There's going to be graphic novels on there. Uh, more vertigo titles on there more black label titles on there. It really is a no brainer. I just, the only thing like I told you, that's kind of a bummer is right now with this introductory rate, they're not doing like a monthly subscription. So it really is. You have to drop the full amount. That, that um, is true. Um, it, there is no monthly yet. It doesn't even say what a monthly is going to cost. So, I mean, if you think it costs like uh like your ad free um HBO Max subscription. I, my you know thought was I mean? like eleven, twelve bucks a month. Yeah. Um, somewhere I mean, in there. I was, yeah, I, I was pushing fifteen, sixteen there with with that. Like if it's even that much a month, I mean one, that's that's still saving you money. That's still cheaper than <clears> a, than like Oh, you one, can easily go one week and pick up that. Yeah. You you can spend that every week. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, these days it's kind of, it sucks. I mean, it does. One, it's a, it's got a lot of pros and cons. You know what I mean? But these days it's kind of a big deal. So, um, and I mean, less than 10 bucks a month once a year. Yeah. I mean, right now it's like you said, you got to drop that hundred dollars, but if there's any way that you have it or you can come up with it, I, I would probably, I would do it. You know, <laughs> I, I, I did do it. So got to hustle. That's what, that's what I've got to do. <laughs> I'm going to sell plasma this weekend. <laughs> right. But anyways, in other news, Patty Jenkins announced that the script is finished for Wonder Woman 3. And I'm like, that that's great. You should have already had that done. That was my thought, but whatever. Um, I'm just like, okay, what did he do? You know, like, that's like a nugget of information instead of just, like, it should have been, script is done, we're filming this date, we've already got this, The you know, and give us something, like, real. Instead of just, like, little... Things. Right, like oh, well, the with the uh, with the um very very cold reception that that eighty four received. I mean, yeah, she should be kissing the fans' butts. <laughs> like, hey guys, I got all this done. I've been working hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it that's just sometimes it's just sad how disappointing. Um, that can be just cause it's, it's the same character, the same director and, and it's one movie to the very next and the quality dipped so hard. Oh, like I told you, I, I look at it as being so crisis and that's what gets me through. Okay. So <laughs> I'm pulling it. I don't, I, I mean, I get that in some form or fashion, but they tied the DCU. They tied the DC universe, film universe, into the crisis event, and made it part of the multiverse that was affected by crisis. By having Ezra Miller stand in front of Grant Gustin and then disappear, basically made it that that Earth was destroyed and then rebuilt in the new multiverse into something horrible. So the <laughs> so all the DC films starting then are all part of the post crisis. Uh, so Aquaman she's, from Aquaman on is all post crisis. And when you put it in that paradigm of thought, it makes everything work a little better, not always for the, for good, but just it helps with continuity and inconsistencies of characters and designs and such. So, so that's my nugget. All right, but let's get into some happy stuff. Ready? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I will read this. We have a big 
bunch of Superman news that came out of New York Comic Con. So, ready? Here we go. Announced at New York Comic Con this week, the big news is that Joshua Williamson is launching a Superman title in 2023 with Jamel Campbell and Nick Dracota. It starts a massive plan we have for Superman in DCU in 2023. All right, so here's the official press release. The new era of Superman starts this January. Action Comics to feature three epic stories of Superman and the Super Family by Philip Kennedy Johnson, Dan Jurgens, and Lee Williams. Superman ongoing monthly series by Joshua Williams and Jamel Campbell to begin in February. John Kent takes on Ultraman and Adventures of Superman John Kent from Tom Taylor, Clay Henry in early 2023. Fans in attendance at today's Superman panel at New York Comic Con were treated to an hour of discussion and news around the last son of Krypton from some of the biggest names in comics. It was first revealed that Action Comics 1051, DC's most action-packed title, will have a new format, offering not one, not two, but three epic adventures of Superman and the entire Super family, including stories by Dan Jurgens and Lee Williams. Following the bombshell events of Action Comics 1050, the world's relationship with Superman has forever changed. The upper limits of his supercharged powers have yet to be reached, and the House of L's transformation of Metropolis, led by Steel, has begun. But Lex Luthor has found the perfect instrument in which to undo everything Superman is working to achieve. Metallo, whose hatred of Superman is matched only by his hatred of Luthor himself. Whew. Man. My one-word mission statement for Action Comics in 2023 is Super Family. I draw inspiration from the 100-page giant Super Family issues, said Philip Kennedy Johnson. We're giving everyone in the House of L their own role and personal journey while still keeping Superman at the forefront and trying all the super titles and tying all the super titles together in a way that's reminiscent of the Triangle Era. I couldn't be more excited to be part of this new era of action comics and doing it along such a, a wonderful artist as Rafa Sandoval and comics titan Dan Jurgens. Now, then Dan Jurgens is returning to the Superman and Lois timeline, which remember when we met him last year, he talked about wanting to write John and everything young again with Superman and Lois. Super Lo, blah, I'm done. I'm done talking. Lois and Clark timeline. With Lois and Clark 2, Doom Rising. Dan Jurgens and Lee Weeks returns to tell the tale of young John Kent on the farm with his parents learning about his abilities, coming of age, and battling the Doom Breaker. And the final story in Action Comics features Power Girl's return and part of a three-part story by Lee Williams. Spinning out of the Lazarus Planet, Action Comics 1051 will be available at Loken Comic Shops on January 24th. It was then announced a brand new Superman ongoing series is launching in February 2023 from Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths writer Joshua Williamson. Uh, let's see. Superman's return to Metropolis and his greatest enemy Lex Luthor is finally behind bars. The future of the Superman family has never been brighter as Clark Kent settles back into his life Iconic and new enemies erupt from the shadows to strike down the Man of Steel. And then, finally it was announced that Superman's Son of Kal-El will end with issue 18, but fans of John Kent do not need to worry. Writer Tom Taylor and artist Clayton Henry will be telling new John Kent stories in Adventures of Superman John Kent. John will finally get his chance to take on the man who is responsible for kidnapping and torturing him, Ultraman. And the Superman of Earth 2, Val Zod, will also play a major part in the six-issue miniseries arriving in comic shops early 2023. So, wow. That is a lot to unpack. Yeah. Um, and it's some really exciting news. I mean, I don't think I've been this excited for Superman comics, period, in a long time, in the sense of, this is a lot of content that we are going to have to stay up on. Um, and it's really good. 
to see certain like Dan Jurgens back writing these different eras of these stories. <clears throat> um, well, I mean, there's a lot of talent there. Um, lots and lots of talent, uh, telling lots of stories. Uh, it's, it's great that, I mean, how long have we been saying that action comics, um, should deal or should at least have some more super family yeah. in it, um, I mean, that, it that, that it should have more stories. Cause like most of the time they're just, they, they are barely spread around, you know, at times they don't even have their own books. So you know? that cover image of Superman with Natasha Steele, um, Supergirl woman, I guess, like, isn't Kara Superwoman right now? Uh, Connor Kent, who should get his own title or name, his own mantle. Um, we have Kong Keenan, the Superman of China. We have the two twins, the two kids that he brought back with him, who are now part of the super family. And then John Kent has a new suit. No cape and more like his suit looks like it matches more with Supergirls. And it's very much more like a jacket look with a collar and everything. And has his own kind of S going on, his own crest. So it's a uh, it's a pretty exciting time, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, there's some really cool looking outfits out there. And um, you know, the the really cool thing I think we're really interested to see what they do with is going to be that Lazarus planet event where John Kent is kind of going a uh, Superman blue look. Yeah. It looks like they're bringing back the uh, energy Superman. Dan Jurgens probably like, guys, really? Seriously? <laughs> right. But I mean, it, it can work in the sense of like, you have these characters, like all these other Superman based characters. Um, Really exciting stuff, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, Tom Taylor's got his his book coming um, uh, with Connor. And he posted about bringing Val Zod back. Yeah. So, I mean, in, that, in that run. So, that's really exciting. That's the one thing about Val Zod that always kind of frustrates me is what I'm like, what do I want to read with Val Zod? He's not in that much. Well, no, he was only created in the new 52 uh, Earth 2 books. Yeah, and even then, like, he wasn't in that many of the stories. There wasn't that much content. Um, no, he didn't He didn't show up until uh, shoot, at least towards the end of Volume 2 or Volume 3. So... Um, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, that's really exciting. Um, I think he deserves some more, some more spotlight. Uh, there's, you know, in, in all these stories with the multiverses and stuff, especially the way things have been going since, uh, Dark Knight's metal, uh, death metal, then, you know, it's, it's about time he's come back. <laughs> All right, so that's comic news, um, and let's let's keep let's keep it going with news because we we got a lot. Uh, let's see here, we got Pennyworth has now dropped its uh, new season. I have not started it yet because I feel like you just dropped it during you know Halloween time, and I got a lot of holiday festivity shows to watch, so I'm saving my Pennyworth watching for. November, and by that time, uh, there'll be more episodes. And I don't know how long the the season's supposed to go for, so I'll have Pennyworth to watch in November, along with another show named Titans. Hmm. Titans season four. Titans season four. And we got a lot of stuff about Titans to talk about. First of all, we got to see pictures. Of the villains, Brother Blood. Um, his suit looks really good, very creepy. Other than maybe the mask, 
Um, the mask is kind of bony and everything. But, and it's like orange, just gold cape. There's a lot of details in it, like some teeth and scale looking stuff. Um, Jinx, who I don't know nothing about. And then uh, Madam Mayhem. It was, I guess, extremely powerful. We have to see an image of her in her suit. Yeah, and we got a clip of her. Yeah, we're getting the clips, man. Don't get too far ahead here. No, I know. I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about it. I was just saying, like, you brought up her powerfulness. So, and then we got. So we're 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 keeping with picture reveals. We got Garfield in his suit. He's actually going to get a super suit now. Only took four freaking seasons. But it's based more off his jacket, um, the white and red suit. And he looks good. He looks good in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I really like his suit. They talked about that they toyed with an idea of doing the purple, but they went with the white and red. And cool. I just want to see him actually transform into more animals and be more active. I would like to see yeah, him transform into more animals and stuff. Um, I I really did like how he was able to utilize his animal abilities and transformations um, a little bit in the last season during fighting and stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I definitely hope that um, they that we get some more of that. I agree. I mean, I, I don't agree. I don't quite expect the. Um, I don't expect the level of cartoonish where like he just jumps up in the air, transforms into a bird, flies over and transforms into an elephant and drops on somebody. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But if they do that. I'm cool with it, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, it's, it's one, it's to expect it. You know, it's, uh, um, this show has never gone that far on anything. Except for costume design, <laughs> so yeah, on his design, like, great job. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job, and they don't utilize it enough. So those are the costume reveals. Now we got the date for when Titans is coming. Do you, do you have that, James? Because for some reason, I didn't. I don't have my date. Um. November uh so they're they're, they're dropping it um actually mm-hmm. as uh parts yeah they're dropping it in parts um yeah it is November 3rd is when it will drop um part 1 and then uh more episodes will drop in 2023 okay so, so all right I'm not sure how many episodes um, after two episode premiere, one episode will be dropped weekly through December 1st. More episodes for season four will be released in 2023. Because, not to jump too far ahead, but in December, they're going to do part one of Doom Patrol. Yeah, Doom Patrol season four. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um so that that's cool because if you think about it, that's new DC content of Pennyworth in, on HBO Max, Pennyworth in October, build, and I bet Pennyworth will probably end about the time Titans will start, then Titans will go into Doom Patrol. So we'll have a pretty consistent new live action DC. DC. Yeah, for for a few months straight. Now, we got like three. No CW little... breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Three. We didn't get an official trailer for season four, but we got three teases for season four. One was just like talking and like ruins and uh, a hand that came out of a pool of blood for Brother Blood. And then we got runes. 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 There you go. (laughs) Ruins. Ruins. Uh, And then we got one that was them, the Titans on like their, their... party bus <laughs> they're mega bus driving and they're leaving metropolis and it's our first clip that shows titus as lex luther and he uses a super high frequency 
and Connor's freaking out. He talks to Connor that he wants to meet him. And Connor tells the rest of the team, we need to go back to Metropolis. We see that Tim Drake has a bow staff that was made for him by, uh, I can't remember the character's name from Star Labs, who I guess is Tim's current boyfriend. In Bernard. Comics. Bernard, that's right. Um, So I, my only thing right now, I'm saying this, okay, straight up, is uh, I'm not digging the beard on Titus. Like the John Cryer beard was one thing, but I, not digging the beard on Titus. He's got a pretty long beard. I'm looking forward to seeing the character. So the, am I. The, the way he's written and the way he's uh, portrayed. Uh, so. I am just. It just looks like a weird, scraggly kind of beard thing. I don't know. It doesn't feel very Lex to me, but we'll see. <laughs> at, le- at least more, at least more kept by a guy with with billions of dollars. Yeah. And then we got the third clip, is the Titans, and it's Garfield, Rachel, Connor, Nightwing, and Tim Drake with a bow staff. Not a costume, just a bow staff. And it's Madame Mayhem. And Connor goes up, flies up, uses his heat vision. But like you said, he shoots his heat vision and starts it in front of her, not right at her. I, guess I was going to say, do you want to critique it as we go? <laughs> yeah. So you, know, I, you yeah. said, you, you first you started with Tim. Tim out there with the Titans, no costume. Everybody else is in costume, no mask, and his bow staff. Yes. Ridiculous. Yeah, like no protection, no no hiding his face, who he is. Like like what is the what is that? Why do they keep doing that? And so he does that, and I'm pulling it back up now. Um, I don't want to turn the sound down, but we see them do it, and then Connor gets blasted by her, and just goes flying back. Yeah, he blasts like 10 yards in front of her and torches the street before hitting her. And then she just like turns it around and sends him flying. The only thing I can think of is he's trying to intimidate her, you know, instead of just straight out like killing her. Because she shoots <laughs> right. him through a car, through a bus, hits him, and then he's like laying on top of a car in pain. But, you know, take out the big gun first. And then she just keeps walking like some sort of uh the next up, Rachel. Raven looking cool, sending out her darkness and uh Ma- Madame Mayhem's like absorbing it. And Rachel goes down. So now we have Garfield the shapeshifter, Tim with a stick, and Nightwing. Um, so here comes Dick. Nightwing, kick. Extra mistake on her staff. Okay. Um, she hits him. He keeps fighting. She freezes him. He stops moving. And then she, like, does something. She goes to try to red electrocute him. Garfield starts to turn into something. He gets blasted. Tim's getting electrocuted. And then Starfire's getting electrocuted. She goes blue and shoots some sort of blue energy at her. Um, and she's just sitting there taking it with her staff and then a big explosion knocking everybody back and Titans coming November 3rd so yeah she this is is that scene of the Titans being cocky and uh, what do you call it and getting their butts kicked (laughs) and just getting ran all over so we can actually set up conflict in the se- in the season and and it and it's shown and it's shown in a way because this series has had some extremely good um choreography especially coming from Nightwing um and others uh when they do like the ground hand to hand fighting um outside of the superpowers and stuff 
they've done really good, really well at the choreo- the fight choreography. And in this scene, it's pretty awful. Like, it looks awful on purpose. So, like you said, it can create drama. Yeah. That I mean, they got you, their butts kicked. Yeah, they come off like, we're titans, we're hot stuff. Whap, whap. Okay, we need to actually train. I so, which is kind of crappy three. because that's something that Dick is all about is training. They're always training. He's always saying something about it. He in season two and season three yeah. about people, you know, being prepared and ready for this. And so I don't know. Is it, yeah, is it, for real. you know, is it one step forward, two steps back? We'll we see. It's like see. we said, Titans always start strong and then they do the same bull crap. It's like, the same writers from from uh, Arrow, you know, Oliver grows. Then he goes, he makes the same mistakes again and again and again, and you're just like, okay, I'm I'm tired of this. But it's coming November, so that's exciting. Doom I'm looking forward to cool. it. I'm looking forward to it. I want to see it. Um, it's just that was it was kind of a weak showing from a show that you know has really great moments like as as overall it's it's been good but not great um yeah. some would argue that fact too so you see where I, that is but here's what makes that seem better they're fighting her all of a sudden portal opens boom grant gustin runs in knocks her out grabs connor runs back to the portal grabs Kara, heads over to superman lois new multiverse earth and decides that they need to port together and fight an enemy <laughs> and we have Connor, Superboy, Tyler Hecklin, Superman, and Kara together with Grant. And it's a teaser for an upcoming multiverse crossover. Boom. Yeah, that'd be great. Lawyered. All right. <laughs> so Doom Patrol, they give us a tease of the new singing of the new season with singing butts. <laughs> Butts singing Shaboopy. And that show is one that if you are a a partaker of substance that may help the enjoyment of that series. (laughs) (laughs) But it's coming Um, back. It's coming back in December. And well, you know, it's it's like I it's like I said when I when the these things came out between Titans and Doom Patrol the um the low quality of some of the effects that we saw in the, especially that mother mayhem fight uh madam mayhem whichever one it is uh like if it if there's if things look bad or weird on doom patrol it just adds to the charm yes because of the show that it is Titans itself is a different show, and when it's lacking, it's lacking. Yes. Yes, it is. So. Uh, <clears throat> so. All right. Last thing we have from New York Comic Con was we got some new update teases of McFarlane figures. First of all, we got. New superpowers were in spring of 2023. We're getting Wonder Woman, Nightwing, and Deathstroke, old more pirate style Deathstroke, with a Batmobile and the Invisible Jet. Okay, so that's for the superpowers line. And this is just spring of 2023, might I add. Then Page Punchers, we're getting Aquaman, Ocean Master, Aqualad, and Black Manta. And they look cool, but nothing made me go, you know. Yeah, I mean, those were pretty cool-looking characters, though. Or figures. Walmart has exclusive four Batman the Animated Season special figures. They have Batman, the Joker, Harley, and Bullock. That are for pre-order now. We have, where is it? Uh, This one excites me here. We have six-inch Batman 
classic TV series figures. We have King Tut, eh. Uh, radioactive Batman, eh. But then an official Batman 66 Harvey Two-Face. So that's one I'm buying. Yeah. Uh, so that one, that one got Tyler's attention. And then in fall of 2022, they have Black and White Riddler, Black and White Robin, Alfred dressed up as Batman, and Egghead. And I was like, okay. Then we're going to move over to new 12-inch figures for fall of 2022, I guess, because the picture was cut off. We have Frankenstein. And we have Mongol. And James about lost his poop when he saw Mongol. <laughs> well, I was excited to see Mongol. Um, yeah, it's pretty uh, awesome. Couple of mega figs. The, uh, I mean, I mean, the Frankenstein. I'd be, I'd be inclined to have. But yeah, definitely uh, have a pretty awesome figure of Mongol uh, standing next to you know Big Dark, dark side, side and Steppenwolf opposite some Superman. Talking about big things, the gold level Walmart pre order exclusive of uh, black and white Solomon Grundy. Right. That looks that's the uh, Arkham City Solomon Grundy, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, it is. And that's a pretty awesome looking character model, character design. You know, if you remember that from the game, him being chained up underneath the penguins. Uh, uh, was it the Iceberg Lounge? I think so. And yeah, then in the museum. Seven-inch figures coming in spring of 2023. We have Signal. More of a classic Catwoman. Another Batman. I can't wait. It's blue uh, trunks and blue and gray. A uh, different Joker. There's no details on there. Yeah, like it's the... What's that? The Denny O'Neill? Yeah. Era? Dennis, of- yeah. That's what it looks like is Denny O'Neill, uh, Catwoman and Batman, but I can't really tell from the f- we have Mr. Freeze, but then we're getting Connor, Superboy, and the Eradicator. Yeah. So those are two that Tyler has to buy. And then at seven inch line in spring of twenty twenty three is the Dark Knight series. Where we're getting Bane, Joker. Two Face, Scarecrow, and Batman as the Dark Knight. So out of that line, I have to buy them all. <laughs> Bane is probably my least excited for. I'm sorry, James, but I definitely have to have Batman, Scarecrow, and Two Face. That's a really awesome line, and for the fact that that when the those movies came out, yeah, there were toys, but they were crap. You I know. Mean, they- the one Joker was really cool. Um, I didn't get any toys from Batman Begins, and like I'm looking at my Robert Pattinson McFarlane Batman right here, and it looks really good. So to get a really good Christian Bale Batman to go with it, oh and- yeah, to have to have a Christian Bale Batman. I mean, heck, even if you got uh uh go back for some further ones, but get like a, um, an Adam West. See if you can't get a Michael Keaton. If you get yeah. that Val Kilmer from Batman forever. Well, I'm get hoping you, that we get, uh, I'm hoping uh, we get Michael Keaton. Uh, ben Keaton. Affleck and Christian yeah, Bale the, and, and Pattinson all together. <laughs> I haven't got the Ben Affleck cause I've been able to find it in a store. And then when we were at the con, I didn't have the money cause they actually had them reasonably priced, but online, the, the Justice League Batman figure has gone up. Uh, oh yeah, that- there was there was one at the store not too long ago that I seen around here. Um, but at the time, I didn't have the money for it, so we walked by and I was like, "Oh man, like I'd love to grab that," but and then didn't have that twenty that week. We have a Michael Keaton that comes with the flash line that will come out next year. So I'm hoping we will get a Keaton figure from that line, but that's all the big DC McFarlane that we saw. And like, like I said, most of all that spring of 2023. 
So my wallet's already crying at me. Uh, small, I know. Note, small news, real quick, um, before I forget. Bat Wheels, the second episode, will come out 10-17 as a Halloween special for all you listeners with little kids. That Ooh, My nice. kids enjoyed that. And when they asked me, Sailor's asked me several times when uh, Bat Wheels is coming. I'm like, I don't know. But then they tweeted out uh, the Halloween special that's coming. So that's Oh, awesome. that's cool. That's pretty new because I haven't seen that. And I heard that it's going to be dropping on Cartoon Network here like this month. Good. So maybe after this special, they'll actually start releasing it. Um, but that's that's all the news I have. Um, you know, we're we're gearing up for Black Adam here in a couple of weeks, and now we're gonna real quick talk about something. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but they're now make, there's now you know things being stated that Henry Cavill filmed a, a scene in the Flash because I guess the Flash had some reshoots recently. And officially, the Flash is edit has been locked, so the film is done, edited, and now is being scored. Um, and I just want to say, like, if if so, awesome. Same thing with, you know, the uh, the potential Superman cameo in Black Adam. But if it happens, I'll be super excited. But I'm not going into Black Adam expecting Superman. I'm going for Black Adam. I'm not going into the Flash expecting Superman. I'm going for the Flash and for Batman's. Um, so I, I just I'm just tired of people just going butt crazy with Cavill's going to be here, Cavill's going to be there, and then people getting disappointed. Well, their disappointment is of their own making. You know, oh, I know, I know. We we know <laughs> someone who we know someone who's like that who puts their own expectations on something. Yeah. Um, I mean, heck it's, um, you know, I can say, I can say I was almost, uh, I was conscious of that. So like, so I watched the new Hellraiser when it came out on, on, um, last Friday on Hulu. And, you know, I, on, I actually expected more, um, uh, uh, more possible brutality from that movie and um it actually it was way less than i had had, had initially expected and like it made me have to rethink the movie a little bit after it was over hmm. just because like after it was over i was like you know what like that was tamer than I had expected. And, and so like, in a way it was, the movie was less than I had expected. So I was like, well, I really enjoyed myself, but there was, but my expectation of that has nothing to do with what was actually presented to me. I had nothing to do with the movie itself. So I, I had a conscious, um, a conscience, uh, understanding of that in the moment. Hmm. That's very wise, James. Very wise. <laughs> so just saying like, I had that recently myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it does happen and that's it. You know, it's what, uh, until you see the movie, I mean, you really don't, yeah, your your expectations just have no bearing on the film itself. And then Sounds people good. constantly let that taint their view of it. Yeah. So, all right. Um, now, James did some more Superboy watching, so we're going to jump over and talk a couple episodes of Superboy. Season 2. Yellow Perry's Spell of Doom. Season 2... And that would be episode 14. Synopsis is a doll belonging to a shy waitress comes to life and turns her head into a sorceress. And then they both work to make Superboy fall in love with her. I'll be honest. This episode was weird. The doll was creepy. I kind of tucked out my head because I still have issues with dolls because my mother used to keep a lot of dolls in the house. 
And it was one of those things you didn't really think about until the day my brother and I were watching Dead Silence with some friends. And my friend goes, your mom has some dolls. And then we kind of just took note. And ever since then, it's just been kind of creepy. So, But the <laughs> voice that the doll had was just really unnerving. Creepy. So we'll skip that one. All right. Episode 15, Micro Boy. It's a 7.9. And the synopsis is hoping to impress Lana because everybody fucking loves, I mean, freaking loves Lana. <laughs> a fellow student invents an energy capsule that makes him a su- superhero, but he is unable to control his newfound powers. James, micro boy. Micro boy. Um, <laughs> the, the guy's voice does not sound like it should be for that character. That's, yeah. It's interesting. Um, just just one little outside note that I took for that. Um, the suit was... It looked like a onesie. And, and I don't know what that rubber helmet or what that rubber mask was over the head. Did you just expect him to yell, Mom, don't disturb me when I'm cleaning my room. <laughs> um... Because he lived with his mom, and she was always like, what are you doing, son? And he's like, I'm doing what I need to, mom. Well, you know what? It reminds me of that Justice League episode of where the guys, the guy goes through time, and his wife was, like, yelling oh, at yeah. him. and Yeah. And <laughs> so it's she was just, like, being horrible. And this, and this kid's mother was just being horrible to him. You know, so, I mean, she made him feel like nothing, and he he made himself something. Um, it was interesting, though. Uh, time travel sent him back to when there's no microwaves in the air. So he did some sort of experiment to because absorb like- energy, to absorb microwaves. Yeah, and it was like in the modern age, it was causing more problems. And he actually tried to be a hero, so he went with Superboy's help. He traveled back in time, and then at the end, he met some girl who was kind of like Lana from the past. Kind of remind me of an episode of Power Rangers, where they take the clone of Tommy to the past, and he meets like an ancestor of Kimberly's. There's a lot with Superboy that makes me think of Power Rangers. It very much is in that vein. And then the next episode, we're we're skipping episode 16. We have our reasons, people. (laughs) You'll uh, understand later. We're going to episode 17, James. Aired February 10th, 1990. (laughs) Brimstone. Brimstone. With special guest, Philip Michael Thomas. And you're probably like, who? Uh, Tubbs from, you know, Miami Vice. And if you're still like, huh? There's IMDb people. <laughs> um, Super he was a Boy big Fire. name at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Su- Superboy falls under the spell of the evil sorcerer Proto until a mysterious man named Brimstone lends his assistance. Um, this felt like a very early, like, Jason Blood, Constantine kind of character that just uh, didn't really do anything like i don't even know if this character ever appeared in comics i mean he he looked like he looked like a a mix between like some kind of genie and and ghost rider (laughs) pirate uh (laughs) weird rolled up on his motorcycle and he's like "Mm -hmm." and you know Uh, superboy of course (laughs) you know magic hurts superboy and Brimstone has to help him. They're like, uh, what do you call it? At a sporting event, he has to help him out because people are trying to. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, his roommate. And they call him? Andy. Andy. Yeah. Um, is trying to hustle. He's trying to sell off stuff. Fake, fake kryptonite rocks to people. So and and some guy comes in and attacking people, and this guy is actually like, 
he's like zombifying. Yeah. Um, like the, the effects on his face, they progressively get more and more. And he looks pretty grotesque by the time he uh, ends up dying. And this episode was written by Mike Carlin. You know, comics editor Mike Carlin. So. But, yeah, was that the last one you watched was Brimstone? Because the next one's a pretty interesting episode. Yeah, the last one I had watched was Brimstone. So, James is making his way. I'm currently in season three. Um, so we are making our way through Superboy now. Yep. Getting through it slowly. Thank you, Tubi. We love. Thank you, Tubi. And now James is going to read us some comics, James. Um, well, the first one I got is... Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest number seven. Uh, Meet the Boy Thunder. Meet the Boy Thunder. All right, James, you, you can Thunder. take over and talk for a little bit. <clears throat> um, so we got an opening kind of like uh, All Star Superman Gotham City, Doomed Planet, uh, Desperate Scientist, Last Hope, uh, sending their child off planet as the planet's exploding. Um, there's, uh, some sort of big crack in the sky. There's news reports on it. Superman's going, Batman is on the scene. It must be, uh, coming through in Gotham if Batman's there first, I'm assuming. Uh, the ship comes flying out and just misses the bat, uh, the bat wing and Superman catches it, uh, lands it to the ground. There's a young man inside, um, David uh, Sakella. That works. <clears throat> yeah. Um, talks about how um, his parents, they believed in parallel worlds. Um, it was a rocket. Uh, it was a rocket drive. Uh, they invented this thing they called the hyperdrive. Uh, said it could travel to alternate realities and it was supposed to be a test probe. And it's it ended up being his lifeboat from the planet being destroyed. Um, hmm, sounds familiar there, Clark. <laughs> yeah, very much. Uh, very much in the vein of what, what happened to Superman. Um, the kid, Robin's trying to comfort him, and the kid gets hot. Burns, uh, kind of burns Robin's hand. Um then it's just, it starts a fire. Like, the woods catch on fire and everything. Um, Superman goes in there. Uh, he he rescues Batman and Robin from the fire. Puts the fire out with his super breath. Um, your body functions are normal, but your stress, indi- your stress indicators are off the charts. Try to calm down, breathe. So he breathes, he kind of gets it under control. Um... Uh, Batman says, you go ahead, Superman. There's something I want to check out. I'll be in touch. Superman is taking him to the fortress. And Robin rides with him. He's riding on his shoulders as they go flying. <laughs> Robin always looks like a good time. Flying off, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, mm-hmm. Fortress of... You are excused. Yeah, well, I caught a little bit of a cold. Uh, Jamie and the baby got real sick. And then mm-hmm. I caught a little bit of a cold. Uh, and it gave me a cough. So still just uh, dealing with that. The aw is not for Jamie. (laughs) It's for for the baby. Yeah. Uh, Fortress of Solitude, the body, the bottle, Cindy, city of Candor. If I could read, you couldn't read earlier and I can't read now. (laughs) We can't read. (laughs) (laughs) Woohoo. Um, so they're, they're in talking to Kandorian scientists, um, basically that what, what he's, his abilities, um, he basically has to learn to control them. Um, 
you know, they give him uh, a Kandorian fabric. Um, <laughs> Kandorian, in Earth's environment, Kandorian fabrics are indestructible. The suit will help contain his new powers. Uh, no, that's cool. I just, how do you feel real quick about like the idea that Superman can just pop into Kandor and pop out, but yet can't somehow make everyone in Kandor bigger again, but he can make himself bigger? Right. Um, not, not really a fan of that. I'm just going to throw that out there. I mean, yeah, that is that is questionable. Ob- you know, for obvious reasons, it's very questionable. Um, but you know, I mean, it is kind of it's an entire city in a like closed and provided for environment. So uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, yeah, if you can go in and come out, why can't? I mean, could all the Kryptonians come out? But then if you let all the Kryptonians out of Kandor on Earth, what's going to happen? You know? So. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, uh, that's kind of always, <laughs> that's always been a thing whenever he just kind of goes to Kandor. Um Hank, they go to, uh, they go to Candor in Philip Kennedy Johnson's run right after, uh, like it was, everybody was killed by Rogel Czar, but he still possesses the city and all of its mm-hmm. knowledge. Um, anyways, they, they leave Candor, um, uh, Robin, if you can hear me, move to a private channel. We have situation. Um, he hears uh, he hears Robin and Batman talking about uh, his parents. So you must have a form of super hearing. Um, it's David, no, I have to see my mom and dad, please, right now. Um, so they take him to Gotham City. He sees his parents and he automatically rushes off to see them. They say no. Uh, come to find out this couple's son died when he was three, I believe. Um, yeah, died when he was three. Um, so, like, he just really traumatized his parents right there. Um, yeah, it says he's still in shock. Robin's trying, you know, Robin's sitting with him, comforting him. Um says uh, uh, uh poor kid he needs a place to be can you dick and alfred take him in uh we're not really equipped to train a child with superpowers clark how about your parents uh you and i can't show david our civilian identities yet that's too big a secret to saddle him with especially in his condition uh still if i'm all he has uh congratulations clark you just became a father um mm-hmm. <laughs> says uh while you two keep trying to figure stuff out i'm calling an audible i know how to distract david from his trauma a bit less uh maybe make him feel less alone um it does however require a field trip um they they uh and robin takes him uh there's a place built inside a mountain uh, what is it with you people in caves? I'll ignore that, David. I want you to meet some of my friends. These are the Teen Titans. And uh, got Garth Aqualad there, uh, Wally West, Donna Troy, and Roy Harper. Along with Dick Grayson. Which is, which is uh, exciting to see. And I, I, I just want to say, oh, elsewhere, we... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, elsewhere somebody is is starving. It's been three weeks of hunger. Um, ne- uh, beautiful. Next, uh, the key master of Gotham. I love the artwork. Dan Mora's artwork is probably some of my best favorite comic art I've seen in a while. And then, oh yeah, very very good. Yes, Action Comics ten forty seven. Hallel returns, part one. Part now, did one. this have an alternate cover by Bermejo or not? Because 
I got the standard one where it looks almost like George Reeves. Superman got punched in the face on the cover. You know, with the Lex Luthor who looks like he's trying to take a crap. Um, <laughs> right, that's the cover I got. Um, you know what? Honestly, I forgot to look, so I am going to have to pop in and find out. Um, because I'll take this sucker back and be like, you know what? Give me another, or I'll just go buy another copy. Go buy the Bromejo copy and just put it in the sleeve. Leave it alone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, no, you know what? You reminded me. I'm going to have to check on it. So, all right. We'll take Um, this Well, well, I will take us to Strikers Island one week ago. Um. (laughs) So they are at Strikers Island, a visitor. She's visiting John, um, John Corbin, Metallo. Uh, he is in pretty bad shape, and he is he can't speak. He's talking over a screen, uh, talking via text over a screen. I mean, he um, looks like a, 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 just a cyborg. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, something coming in, something coming in hot, uh, over, uh, over the, uh, over the seas, through the sky, really, really beautiful color on this page. Uh, the, the, the title page here, kal Returns, Chapter One, Double Sun. Uh, one week later, um, no supers, uh, no supers in sight. They are flying down, uh, flying down the street in some sort of tank-looking thing, uh, and they are stopped by Superman. They blow up the the bridge. Superman saves some people, saves some uh, a family in the vehicle. He has a really cute exchange with uh, with some kids. Yeah, and the kid tries to give him his flash dog, and he goes. You hold on to Flash Dog, son. I think he's he'd miss you a lot. But there's one thing you can do for me. Keep your seatbelt. Just like you did today. Those but those belts keep kept you all safe as much as I did. As much as anything I did. Can you do that for me? And the kid's like, uh huh. Superman told me to wear my seatbelt. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. <laughs> keep wearing that seatbelt. Aye aye. Um so we go to, um, I don't know, like a United Nations, um, where somebody is talking about Superman and War World inhabiting uh, an orbit around Earth. Um, full, and that War World is full of people who only know violence and bloodshed. Uh, that people, you know, that they should be concerned. Superman is here to help mitigate the crisis, and we've got Natasha, Steele, Connor, Superboy, John, Superman, and Kara, Superwoman. Uh, mm-hmm. Really awesome picture, you know, so, some great artwork. Um, and then Superman, uh, you know, going into a new, into a, a super uh, Superman speech. Um, Calling War World an existential threat. Um, not Superman, the the po- the politician. Um, yeah. Superman. I'd remind them the same has been said about me, and also uh, many of them, even among the nations of Earth, entire populations fight such preconceived notions every day. Uh, I have a responsibility to the people of War World. Most of them were taken from their homes and only want to find them again. They need our help to do that. My family and friends who have joined me here today, as well as others, will help me accomplish this task. We will get these people home. Um, Lex Luthor is looking on. Um, They talk about some of the uh, immense technology that exists on war world um, that will help that could help uh, earth's energy research um, leaps and bounds ahead to the future. Um, Lex Luthor. This is really cool. Lex Luthor sends a drone 
sends a, a suit out um like and and it's got a kind of a projection of his head so it's almost as though um luther is uh self-piloting this drone Mm -hmm. so like he can be there even if he's not there Mm -hmm. um so he flies off to war world um i mean this whole there's so much of this uh so much of this issue of Superman giving his speech um, says, and that if called upon, they will show our new friends the same kind and decency that I was given the decency that all people deserve. You know, some, some have expressed their, uh, their desire to remain on earth because they have no homes to go back to. Yeah. Um, says so this and lex says this so this is uh war world look at these poor imbeciles everywhere superman goes the sheep trample each other for a chance to nuzzle his hand this would be earth by now if not for me um this is what are you looking for lex do you even know uh i'll know it when i see it and i know where to find it unbeknownst to superman he and i share a mutual friend uh, this friend has been keeping me informed on Superman activities on War World and other things of value. I've heard reports of necrocyborg biotech, intense radioactive materials, and something called an orphan box. Uh, it didn't pique my interest at the time. It sounded fairly ordinary as these things go. But after Superman's little announcement today, now I'm not sure. Sh- I'm so sure. Uh, so he. Uh, he finds, uh, like, a creature, um, something dead, and it looks as if he kind of goes for its heart, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of really weird. <laughs> um, well, he's and then, I know who can use this or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, clearly, gotta be Metallo, right? Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, clearly he's got to be Metallo. Um, this is what are you doing? Uh, playing with John's old toys. Um, better than reality television. Um, this is really nice, them talking about John. Um, she says, uh, um, I still have mornings when I wake up, put on coffee, and I expect to John... Uh, it, expect John to run in wearing his little hoodie going for the Nutella like he used to. When he's not with me, his age shifts up and down in my mind. Like all our memories together are happening at once. So I think, you know, as long as it's been now for John being, um, an adult, you know, in the comics, like it's still a new thing for them. Still something that they deal with every day that they, have missed out on eight years, seven, eight years of their child's life. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Clark is talking to her about the kids. Um, uh, uh, the kid, the Philosian children that he, that he had, um, become very close to on war world. Um, they stay up there. They hang out. Uh, they, they hang by themselves. They don't want to, to leave just yet. They want some quiet time together and back at strikers Island. Uh, Lex Luther is with Metallo. Uh, Metallo does not want to see him. He keeps telling him, get out, get out, get out, get out. Um, as Lex, uh, keeps talking about him. Um, says, I'm here because you and I share a common goal to save our home from aliens who would take it from us. That need has arisen again. I want to make you John Corbin, a man of extraordinary talents again. Sets the box down in front of him. So next ties that bind. So it'll be interesting to see what we get with Metallo moving forward. Mm-hmm. 
Um, then one week ago, um, Theola, she wakes up to see uh, John Henry Iron, Irons, Kara, and Connor in front of her, as well as Kelex. Uh, she wakes up, uh, Superman. It's been months. She's been unconscious for months, and Superman's been gone on War World for months. Um, she's very she's very curious if he's succeeded at all. Um, sea levels outside the fortress have risen sharply. Burning debris is falling into the Atlantic Ocean. So, something here I'm curious about. So, the fortress here seems to be uh, out in the ocean again. Um, not particularly seeing that because there's a lot of water. You know, so it seems like the, um, seems like the fortress might be in the ocean. So I know we were talking about, uh, John going to the fortress in the Arctic when he did. So I'm wondering if he wasn't using the, if there's two fortresses or something, or if he moved it, I don't know. Um, Theola, Steele, and Connor all fly out, um, Rocks fallen from the sky. War World enters the orbit. And they're ready to attack. Ready to fight. And uh, they fly in. They think it's Mongol. And Superman. I think I've been gone just about long enough. Got Midnighter, Enchantress. Uh, the Philosian Kids. Apollo, Natasha. Uh, Black, or uh, Orphan. Uh, Lila and Omac. Car is really happy to see him. You know, all some, all some love going around. Um, she says, Theola says, it's done. War World is free. You did it. Superman says, no, you did. You wore my symbol under Mongols rule, even though it meant death to do so. You led a freedom movement in one of the most hostile places imaginable. You crossed the galaxy to find help and risk everything to betray Mongol. You did this. But no, it's not done. Not all of Mongol's forces recognized our victory. I think some of them <clears throat> may have come here to punish me, and I think Earth is in very real danger. And we have the um uh we have the oldest war zone. Um I forget the name that he might have used. Um the one with the longest chain. Uh, he has no legs. He only has one arm. Um, but him and him and some other war zones come to earth. Uh, Mongol who was hear my prayer. I serve thee well. And three of my mighty si uh, thy mighty sires, mighty conquerors, all each of thee more ruthless than the last. But now thy line is ended. Let my final act in life be one of vengeance against the, thy greatest enemy, the unblooded sword, the one you called Superman. Next to the vengeance of Mongol. Deep. All right. The next issue hit stands this week in the return of Kal-El. And one thing news-wise we forgot to mention is the Harley Quinn and Ivy animated Valentine's Day special. That will that is coming. Totally forgot about that. Oh, that's not something I was aware of. I do know that this week they dropped a Terrors in Time, eighty page giant for Halloween. See, my problem is I bought one of those before they did, and I'll look at that one because it could be good. Because I like I told you before, to me there's horror, but then there's like Halloween horror. Stuff that really deals more with the holiday and not just. And there was one I bought that was like Batman was on the cover and it was like all these stories, like short stories, but only one was like a legit Halloween story. The rest were like zombies and stuff like that. And to me, that's not really like that's just horror, it's not Halloween y. So I was like, eh, this isn't that great. So I'll, I'll check that out at the shop before I buy it. Order yeah. for it for the app. I was going to say, well, lovely thing. I, I can read it next month. So catch up, catch up to it real soon. But all that's right, going to be, listeners. that's going to be a game changer. Yes, unfortunate. In fortunate ways and unfortunate ways, sadly. 
Yeah. <laughs> but here we go. All right. Check us. Check it out. Let us know what comics you're reading. Get ready for Black Adam. We got some cool stuff coming up. And remember. Look up in the sky. Yes, it's me, Sayla. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, the Aspiring Kryptonians. Always Hold On to Smallville. Caped Wonder. The Geek of Steel. And Truth, Justice, and Hope podcast. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.